that we have. But we have a man now negotiating for us. We have a man now negotiating for us who truly, who truly can't speak. He can't put two sentences together. They ask him a question at a news conference. He has no idea what the hell they're talking about. And when you look at what he did and what he says, even to Russia, when they did attack Ukraine, the way he spoke was so bad. I said, you know, I think it looks like that's going to happen because what he's saying is so bad. It's the exact opposite of what you should be saying. He can't put two sentences together, and he's responsible for negotiations on nuclear weapons in World War III. The guy makes a speech. He can't find the steps. They're all over the place. See this stage? This stage has one, two, three, four. Most stages have more than that. But in New Hampshire, they want to cut back on the costs a little bit. So they only give me four options. But when I'm finished, I actually pick one of the four. He can't find the stairs. And if he finds them, he can't get down them. The whole thing is not believable. Can you imagine President Xi of China, powerful kind of a guy? They hate when I say that. Oh, you're saying nice things now. He controls 1.4 billion people rather ruthlessly, right? Can you imagine when he sees this guy walk into an office or walk? In? I wonder what he's, I'd love to be a fly in the world. I'd like to hear what they, I, I will tell you, number one, they can't believe it. But our, our country is in great danger, most dangerous because of weaponry and because of where we are and all of the things that are happening. Again, Ukraine wouldn't have happened. Israel wouldn't have been attacked. Inflation wouldn't have happened. Oil price wouldn't have gone like that. You know, part of the reason that Russia could go in because at $100 a barrel, Russia's making a fortune. They'll be the only country to make money during a war. Wars are very expensive. But because of that, they drove it up. And this guy has no clue as to what's happening. We're at the most dangerous point in the history of our country, in my opinion. And unfortunately, I've been right a lot of times, you know? Remember the hat that goes, Trump is always right? I have been just about right. He said all the time, I have been right. And I don't want to make that prediction because I don't want it to be a prediction, but there's a real chance that we could be in a world war and it won't be like any other, believe me. Together, we achieved the most secure border in U.S. history. We built 561 miles of border wall and got Mexico to give us 28,000 soldiers free of charge, 28,000. I don't know now, it's a good time and it is a Saturday afternoon and everyone is like, what the hell are we doing on a Saturday afternoon? Does anybody want to hear the snake? Yeah. You know, yes? Should I do the snake? Those beautiful ladies from North Carolina, they've seen about a hundred rallies. I don't know what the hell's going on with their husbands. Are your husbands, do the husbands have a little problem with it? Should I do the snake? No, they've come to a hundred rallies. This is their 100th and they're incredible. They have a group of about actually 50 of them and uh, we appreciate it. How are we doing? How are we doing in North Carolina? Okay, good. We're doing good. I think we're doing good everywhere. You know why? Because number one, I did a good job, but also when you compare it to the incompetence that we have right now, there's more spirit right now than we've ever had before. So this is sort of a, a metaphor. And this is about people coming into our country who you know are gonna be a disaster because they come from jails and prisons. They come from mental institutions and insane asylums. They always say, sir, please don't use the term insane asylum. You know what that is? Silence of the lambs, right? That's Hannibal Lecter the legendary Hannibal Lecter, and they're coming into our country now totally unchecked, unvetted. And this is very much as to what's going to happen, in my very humble opinion. On her way to work one morning, down the path along the lake, a tender-hearted woman saw a poor, half-frozen snake. His pretty colored skin had been all frosted with the dew, Poor thing, she cried, I'll take you in, and I'll take care of you. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. She wrapped him up all cozy in a comforter of silk and laid him by her fireside with some honey and some milk. She hurried home from work that night 
And soon as she arrived, she found the pretty snake she taken in had been revived. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. She clutched him to her bosom. You're so beautiful, she cried. But if I hadn't brought you in by now, you truly would have died. She stroked his pretty skin again and kissed and held him tight. But instead of saying, thank you, ma'am, the snake gave her a vicious bite. Take me in, O oh tender woman, take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman, sighed the vicious snake. I saved you, cried the woman, and you've bitten me, but why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Shut up! Silly woman, said the reptile with a grin, you knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Does that make sense to everybody? Does that make sense? Because get used to it, because this country, this country is going to go through hell if these very, very stupid people are allowed to stay in office. It's a horrible thing that's taken again. They are, they are indeed evil people because they know what's happening. They know what they're doing. Anybody that can cheat on elections so well is not that stupid, okay? And that's what they, they're primo at cheating on elections. On my first day back in the White House, uh, we beat them by swamping them. You know that, right? There's